Hello friends, welcome to Winds of Change. In this video, we will quickly revise the subject Railway Engineering. This is not only a revision video, but we have explained every concept in this video. So you can watch this video, it is fully complete video for Railway Engineering. So let's begin with types of rail. First of all, we will see what are the types of rail that are being used in the practice. These are double headed rail, bull headed rail and flat footed rail. So it was previously used but now we, we are using flat footed rail. In the double headed rails we were having a compression zone and a tension zone as two heads while in the bull headed nose we were having a head at the top and a foot at the bottom and improvised version of this is flat footed rail which is being used nowadays that is compression zone is of the headed shape and tension zone is little flat. So that is why it is called flat footed rail. Its linear density is 52 kg per meter or 52 mr and 60 kg per meter or 60 mr flat footed rails. Okay, these two are being used in India. So memorize it important. Now we will understand the permanent way that is how it looks. So this is the main concept that we have to memorize. In this first of all these are the rails usually flat footed rails are being placed and the distance between inner part of it inner face of it is called the gauge distance. Okay, usually it is 1.676 for broad gauge, for meter gauge it is 1 meter, for narrow gauge it is 0.762 meter and for standard gauge it is 1.435 meter which are being used in UK and USA. Okay, this is mainly this one is used in India that is 1.676. Okay, now we will see here that if this is gauge distance, the sleeper is being placed below it that load by this rail is being transferred to the sleeper now sleeper to the ballast question and now ballast question to this subgrade and subgrade to the ground okay so this is the sequence in which the load is being transferred now we will see here that this much this much of the width is called the ballast shoulder okay this is the ballast and these are the sleepers this slope is 1.5 is to 1 and this slope of the subgrade is 2 is to 1 so memorize it it is very important this much width is called the width of formation. In Indian railways, the rail length which are being used for broad gauge track, it is 12.8 meter, that is approximately 13 meter and for meter gauge track, it is 11.89 meter, that is approximately 12 meter. These are the two lengths that are being used in Indian railways. Now we will see some defect in rails. First of all, corrugated or roaring rails. What is this? The minute depression which are formed on the surface of the rail that are called the corrugated or roaring rails. Okay, there are you may, may have seen there are some small depressions that are being formed on the rail surface that is called the corrugated rail on, and kink in the rail. Kink is when the end of the adjoining rail moves slightly out of the position. Let's say this is one, one of the rail, this is the another piece of the rail at the, at the place of the joint. If one end moves up, another end of the other rail moves down. So this, this situation, this situation called the kink in the rail. Okay, and it is, it is also a defect. Hogged rail, hogged rails are due to the battering or impact action of the wheel at the end of the rail. Let's say this is the end of the rail, these are being, this is a joint and now if the wheel moves on this, first of all it will be on this rail, then it will enter to this rail. So there will be an impact that will happen here and because of that there can be a possibility of forming of hogged rail that is it will be, it will get depressed at the joint. So this is also a defect and buckling of rail. Buckling you can observe it in the lengthwise direction if you watch the rail then only you can find it out that there is some there is some curve that is being formed in the straight uh, length of the rail that is called the buckling of the rail. Why it occurs? During summer due to the rising temperature the expansion of the rail occurs to allow this expansion there must be certain gap in between two rails at the end joint which will be responsible to take out the buckling of the rail. Next topic is sleepers. What are sleepers? Sleepers are the members which support the rail and are laid transfers to the rail. We have already seen it in the permanent way diagram. Now sleepers will transfer the load from the rail to the ballast. Now we will see some classification of the sleepers. First of all, timber or wooden sleepers were being used. They were having very low initial and maintenance cost and they are capable of absorbing shock and vibrations. Okay, but speed was lower on that one. They could be easy to lay, relay, pack, lift and maintain because their weight was less. 
लाइफ स्पैन वॉज अप्रॉक्सिमेटली ट्वेल्व टू फिफ्टीन ईयर्स देन इट इट मे डिके दीज आर इजली सब्जेक्टेड टू वियर डिके अटैक ऑफ वाइट एंड और स्पाइक किलिंग वापिंग एंड क्रैकिंग सो दीज यू मे हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड इन द रिविजन ऑफ द टिम्बर वीडियो इन विच वी हैव ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन द अटैक ऑफ द वाइट एंड्स एंड वापिंग क्रैकिंग डिके इन द टिम्बर पीसेज सो सेम सेम फिनोमिना अकर्स हेयर ऑल्सो इन द रेलवे टिम्बर ऑल्सो ओके सो दीज वर बींग ऑप्सोल्यूट नाउ and after the timber sleepers there came the metal sleepers okay metal sleepers were of the inverted channel with folded ends their ends were rounded okay they were being folded like this usually the ends are like this but these are being folded like this okay so to make it more efficient in combining or accumulating the aggregates in the ballast so these are inverted channel with folded ends now the material from which these are made up of either cast iron sleepers or steel sleepers so let's see the advantages and disadvantages of it cast iron sleepers example is pot or bowl sleepers or plate sleeper or cst9 sleeper this is very famous cst9 sleepers were being used in india and the life span of cast iron sleeper is 35 to 50 years same is for the steel sleeper also better lateral and longitudinal stability in it low overall cost and maintenance cost it's about the overall cost but uh, initial cost is high while it is having high scrap value also and less prone to corrosion than steel sleepers but these are not suitable for the track circuiting because these are good conductor of electricity so then came the steel sleepers steel sleepers look like this okay these were lightweight easily handled less fastening required easy maintenance easy rusted or corroded also but because corrosion was less in cast iron sleepers but steel sleeper can be easily get corroded these are not suitable for the electrified track and these interfere with the track circuiting also because these are also good conductor of electricity now we will see the concrete sleeper which are being used nowadays okay concrete sleeper are used for high speed tracks first of all and these are free from natural decay and attacks by vermin insect etc as that in the case of the timber sleeper no difficulty in the track circuiting and electrification of track because this is not a conductor of electricity these act as an insulator for electricity and these are having high track modulus life span is about 40 to 60 years weight is high so transportation is difficult this is the disadvantage of it and the poor scrap value which is also dis disadvantage okay after this the pre stressed concrete sleeper came into the picture after concrete sleeper these were being used in which concrete is subjected to high value of the initial compression generally m55 and m60 are being used complex design and construction procedure we have already discussed about the pre stressed concrete sleepers in the revision video of pre stressed concrete in which we have been discussed a hover system hover system of pre stressing technique which were being used for the concrete sleepers how they are being manufactured okay now we will see some track fasteners first of all fish plate of steel what is fish plate of steel these are the steel plate used to join in order to maintain the continuity of the rail joint okay so these were like if this is one rail this is another rail this is the end so you can see here that fish plate was used like this this is used to connect two rails together okay and spikes spikes were used to hold the rail on the wooden sleeper this was used on the wooden sleeper so that the rails are being fixed with the sleepers okay this this is a shape of the dog spike and chair what is chair chair is used to support the bull headed rails on the sleepers okay these were made up of the cast iron while fish plate was made up of the steel now keys what are keys keys are the small tapered piece of timber coated on steel okay morgan key 18 cm long and tapered 1 in 32 usually this this key is being used in concrete sleeper also to hold the rail in the position and to maintain the gauge distance this is most commonly used for the cast iron chairs and steel sleepers okay and now sleeper spacing and sleeper density what is sleeper spacing and sleeper density let's discuss in india sleeper density is represented by m plus x where m is the rail length and x is the number which varies from 3 to 7 for broad gauge track sleeper density is represented by m plus 5 okay so let's say the rail length is 13 meter so in india broad gauge track the sleeper density will be represented by 18 that is 13 plus 5 that is 18 so what will be the sleeper density so it will become approximately 1 point something sleepers per meter okay and now we will see the ballast 
Ballast is the granular material. These are like the aggregates, usually broken stone of bricks, concrete, gravel, and sand. Okay, mainly the broken stones are being used for the ballast, and its grading is properly done. Now, depth of the ballast section. This is the next topic, which is very important. You you all know about the ballast. Ballast used to transfer the load from concrete sleepers to the subgrade. Okay, now we will see how we will obtain the depth of ballast. depth of the ballast section minimum depth of ballast layer how it can be determined the formula is s minus w by 2 now what is what are these terms first of all this 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 one is the sleeper and the w is the width of the sleeper and s is the spacing between the sleepers now this distance in between these two it can be given by s minus w because this is w by 2 w by 2 okay so s minus w and the pressure will be taken at 45 degree which will occur Okay, so we will see here that this distance is s minus w by two, so this depth will become s minus w by two because this angle is forty five degree. Okay, so this is the minimum depth of ballast section. Usually, this minimum depth of ballast section for broad gauge this is twenty to twenty five centimeter, and width of ballast for broad gauge track is three point three five meter. Memorize this; these two are very important. Okay, next topic is the creep of the rail. It is the longitudinal movement of the rail with respect to the sleepers. in a track it is obviously an easy topic to understand because we already know the concept of the creep from previous videos it is the longitudinal movement of rail with respect to sleepers in a track we will see the theories of creep here first of all the wave action theory wave action theory these theories are important from the engineering services point of perspective usually these are not been asked in uh, examination of ssc or some state engineering service examination so in the wave action theory we will see that by moving loads of wheel vertical reverse curve is formed in the rails resulting in the longitudinal movement of the rail in the traffic direction okay so this is the case of a rail let's say this is the rail so directional movement movement of wheel is like this in this direction so there will be some depression formed at the place where the rail is being in contact with the wheel okay so there will be a formation of the wave motion wave motion will also be running in the forward direction like this so this is called the wave action theory because of the depression that will be formed here while the next theory is of percussion theory percussion theory is is the case in which the creep is due to the impact of wheels at the rail end ahead at joint okay this is the case of the rail joint here we will see that it is the moving direction now the creep will be caused here when it will come in this wheel comes to the joint okay here the uh, here the load will be acting in the downward direction as q resultant will be as r and creep will be as p okay this is the case of percussion theory and drag theory drag theory says that backward thrust on the driving wheels of the locomotive of train has got a tendency to put the rail off the track backward while the other wheel of the locomotive and wagons push the rail in the direction of the travel as explained in the wave theory okay so there is an vice versa condition that will develop here first of all by the wave theory which will drag it in the forward direction and there will be tendency to push the rail of the track on the backward direction so these two will act drag theory will take it to the backward direction and wave theory will take it to the forward direction okay so these are the theories of the creep that will occur in the rail okay next topic is the geometric design of the track this is the most important topic in railway engineering first of all the gradient of the track there are few gradients which are very important to memorize this is very important whatever i am telling you in the next few minute these are very important gradient that is ruling gradient momentum gradient pusher gradient or gradient at sta station yard so we will see these one by one first of all ruling gradient these are maximum gradient that will be allowed in the plane terrain this value is 1 in 150 to 1 in 200 okay 1 in 150 to 1 in 200 please memorize it it is very important and in the hilly terrain it is 1 in 100 to 1 in 150 this is the ruling gradient and what is momentum gradient there can be a condition in which first of all we will be running like ruling gradient and then we will make a formation of falling gradient so this falling gradient will provide a thrust that will lead to put some additional kinetic energy which will acquire and it will be helpful to obtain a more steeper rising gradient okay that will be called as momentum gradient okay so if rising gradient followed by falling gradient it gets additional kinetic energy to acquire steeper rising gradient so this is called the momentum gradient okay third is the pusher or helper gradient on broad gauge track on western ghat pusher gradient is of 
one in thirty seven by pusher or helper engine we will provide usually two or three engines are being used for this purpose usually two engines are being used only and the gradient in station yard to drain of the water used for the cleaning drains okay this is about one in four hundred that is the maximum value and minimum it is one in thousand that will be provided okay so these were the gradients now we will see a great compensation if there is a curve that occurs then there are some great compensation that has to be provided we already know the concept of great compensation from highway engineering now in the case of due to curvature on grade resistance to motion of the train is increases okay uh, that is why the grade reduced on the curve is called the grade compensation the grade that will be reduced there now what will be the compensation factor it will be for broad gauge track it is 0.04% per degree of the curve for meter gauge it is 0.03 percent per degree of curve for narrow gauge it is 0.02 percent per degree of curve so we have to memorize this that the grade compensation that will be provided in the ruling gradient or the gradient at which we are being designed okay at the position of the curve now there are some formula for the speed of the trains first of all safe speed as per martin's formula for a speed less than 100 kmph that will be obtained from this one only V max can be given by 4.35 under root R max 67. It is very important. Martin's formula is very important. This will be come out in kmph for broad gauge and meter gauge track. 4.35 under root R minus 67. Very important formula. And for if if the if the velocity obtained is more than 100 kmph, so we will go for this one. This formula that is V max will be given by 4.58 under root R. Okay, where R is in meter. Okay, and this value that is V max will be obtained in kmph. Next topic that comes into this is radius of curve or degree of curve that will be obtained for different kind of chain. If we use the 30 meter chain, then this formula will become 1720 by R for degree of curve and this one will be in degree only. And if we are using 20 meter chain, then it will be 1150 by R, okay, where R is the radius of the curve. Always remember it. This is important formula. 1720 by R, usually we use this one. Now there is a concept of sign of the curve which are used to check the accuracy of the curvature. This formula is also important. Usually direct question is being asked for sign of the curve. It is being given by L square upon 8R. Okay. Where L is in meter, V that is sign is in centimeter and R is in meter. Okay. And now the super elevation that is the important concept. Super elevation that is the cant, cant that will be provided given by the formula equal to GV square upon 127R. This is Super elevation con concept is similar to the highway. Okay, at the curve we provide, we increase the level of the outer track with respect to the inner track. So that much will be the super elevation given by e equal to gv square upon 127r, where v is in kmph and r is in meter. Okay, and maximum value of this super elevation is 16.5 cm for broad gauge track and 10 cm for the meter gauge track. Remember it, it is also important. This is very important 16.5 cm and 10 cm, 16.5 for broad gauge, 10 cm for meter gauge. This is the maximum value of the super elevation. For broad gauge track, this G value that will be put here, this is the gauge distance which is given by 1.676 meter, we already know it. Okay. Now after the cant, the cant deficiency that will be provided, it is the difference between the equilibrium cant necessary for the maximum permissible speed on a curve and the actual cant provided on the basis of the average speed of train. We can obtain the actual speed as we have seen earlier and there can be equilibrium cant that will be obtained using the maximum permissible speed. So we will find out the difference between these two which is called the cant deficiency. Okay, so there is a limitation of cant deficiency. We cannot go beyond this. For speed less than 100 kmph on broad gauge track, this cant deficiency maximum value is given by 7.6 cm. It is also important, memorize it. And for a speed more than 100 kmph, this is given by 10 cm. Whatever I am telling important that is on the basis of the question that I have been asked in the previous year of engineering service examination or gate examination. Okay. Now transition curve is the next topic. This is also important topic. Transition curve. First of all, what is the type of transition curve that is being used? That is the cubic parabola here. Okay. In the case of the highway, the spiral curve is being used. In the case of railway, we use cubic parabola. Okay, now what is transition curve? The curve which is introduced in between the circular portion of track and straight and straight track of the both hands. We already know about the transition curve from highways, so I don't need to introduce it. Equation of deflection in case of the transition curve, this is being given by y equal to x cube upon 6rl. Okay, 
So sometimes this question is being asked very rare that they ask about equation of deflection and any value is being uh, is being asked in the question. Now what is the formula for length of transition curve? This is important. These formulas are very important. And this first first approach, this is very very important. Okay, please memorize it. These are being asked in the mains examination. This the length of the transition curve can be given by 7.2 e, where e is in centimeter, that is the cant or super elevation in centimeter. We will take the maximum of these three values. L equal to 0 0.073 e v max, where v max will be given in kmph. Okay, and e we already know super elevation or 0 0.073 d into v max, where d is cant deficiency in centimeter. So maximum of these three value is being taken as length of transition curve. Memorize it. These are very important. Now we will see the second approach. That was the first approach to obtain the length of transition curve. In the second approach, we are using first of all railway board formula to obtain length of transition curve that is given by 4.4 root r where r is the radius of curve in meter or it is based on rate of change of radial acceleration which can be given by 3.28 v cube by r where v is in meter per second and r is in meter. Remember in this formula this is in meter per second otherwise in all the formula v is being used as kmph. And as per the rate of change of super elevation, it can be given by 3.6 e. Okay, e is the cant. The value of the L will be in meter in all the cases. So these are this is the second approach. Okay, usually these the questions are not asked from this one. Questions are being asked from first approach only. Now maximum speed that can be obtained based on the length of transition curve that can be given by if the v v that will be obtained from this one is less than 100 kmph, then v max is given by 134 L upon e. Okay, where L is the length of transition curve and E is the cant or where an L will be in meter and E will be in mm or it can be given by 134 L upon D where D will be the cant deficiency. Okay, if V is more than 100 kmph, so this formula will become 198 L upon E or 198 L upon D, whatever is minimum. Okay, now we will obtain with the next concept of points and crossing. This is very important concept. Please pay attention. These are the spatial arrangement which are used to move trains from one track to another track. Okay. And high manganese steel are being used to make the steel for point and crossing. This is the case of point and crossing. This, this diagram is very important and I am explaining you here. Let's say this is the facing direction from which the train will come and it has to move in this direction. Okay. This has to move in this direction. Then what we will do? First of all, this is a stock rail which is the stationary rail and this is outer straight rail. And this is the rail which can move this tongue rail which can move it there can be a gap which can be formed here so if we have to move this side then we will attach it to the stock rail at this side at the outer side while in the inner side there will be a gap that will be created okay in the in this tongue rail now the rail that will be coming the train that will be coming from this direction it will shift like this okay and uh, this is the this portion is called throat this portion is called wing rail Okay, this rail is called wing rail, this rail is called check rail, check, check rails are being placed and wing rail are being placed so that there cannot be a chances of derailment. Okay, and this is the angle of the switch that is given by alpha. It can be acute angle, it can be obtuse angle at per the condition. And this is the inner curve lead rail, this is the outer curve lead rail. This is the bend in check rail and this portion the, here it is called throw of the switch. This is the stretcher bar which are being attached to both the rails and this is being moved. This this will be moved like this. Okay. And uh, this this portion is called the theoretical nose of crossing that is TNC. So this is the case of the left hand turnout. Okay. You can watch the concept of turnout from a video that I have seen on internet. I have given the link of that video in the description box. Okay. And there is a concept of heel divergence or heel clearance which can be obtained here. If it is attached to it, then there is heel divergence at the value is 0. If it is away from it, that is the train has to move in the forward direction, then there will be a gap that will be called as heel divergence. Distance between the running faces of stock rail and the tongue rail at heel, at heel of the switch. For broad gaze, heel divergence equal to 13.3 cm or 13.7 cm. Okay. So memorize it. It is also important. Now we will see some track junctions. Okay. Turnout or symmetry split, we will see these one by one. These are very easy to understand. What are turnouts? We have already seen. What we have seen that was left, left hand turnout, simplest combination of point and crossing, which enables a track either branch line or siding of the track or from the main track. What symmetrical split or equivalent turnout? What is this? You can see like this. This is uh, 
this is one direction of the train and and if the tray track has been getting two directions of equal radii in the opposite side then it will be called symmetric split here four curved lead rails are being used two check rails and one acute crossing you can see this acute crossing okay and now we will see the three throw switch three throw switch is a condition like this in which sim similar to the symmetric split but in this forward direction no rails were going there were only two directions that will be getting that will be obtained while in the case of three throw switch we are getting three directions one in forward one in left turn one at right turn okay or there can be possibility of it goes straight like this and there can be both right turn only or both left turn only okay so two turn now take off from the same point of the main straight track that is called the three throw switches and next is a diamond crossing diamond crossing in which there are two acute angle crossing two obtuse angle crossing like this this is a rail moving like this and another rail like this and there are it is being formed at some ang angle this angle can be 90 degree also it can form be at at 90 degree also or it can be at some angle if this angle is being obtained then there will be possibility of two obtuse angle like this this one and this one these two are obtuse these two are acute angle crossing okay so this is the case of diamond crossing this these are very rare to obtain crossover is a condition in which the train has to move from one track to another then this crossover is being provided use of the reverse curve between two crossing shortens the length of the crossover you already know about it you have already seen it scissor cross or double crossover it is the case in which double crossover is being provided okay it is a combination of one crossover over the other crossover in opposite direction these are very easy to understand now we will see the classification of some railway station okay so now uh, the technical portion is over now we will see little bit about the theoretical portion of it operational classification are block station non block station and special class station block stations are of abc class and non block station of d or some flag stations okay while some special class stations are there which are not come under these two and there are some functional classification on which we justify the railway stations like non junction station or wayside station these are common station which we already know and junction station is the one at which the trains from the so many directions are meeting and they are being diverging in so many other directions okay or there can be possibility of three direction only and in the terminal station the te the train terminates here like this this is the terminal station and if if, if it has to, to go in this direction also then also it will go like this okay but it will not go in the forward direction it will terminate here first of all okay then the engine is being reversed and then it will go like this so example of this junction station like new delhi railway station or terminal station example is chhatrapati shivaji terminus of bombay you may have seen it now minimum distance by which passenger platform should be covered is 60 meter okay 60 meter is the cover that has to be provided usually the shades for a length of 60 meter is being provided on the platform Minimum length of the passenger platform is 180 meter for the all gauges. Okay, this is important. Memorize it. What are loops? When branch line from a main line again terminates at the same main line, this is the case of the loop. And siding? When branch line from main line terminates at a dead end with a buffer stop or sand hump like this. This is the main line and this is the branch line. It terminates here. So it is the case of the siding. And what is station yard? Station yard is the system of track laid for receiving, storing making up new trains and dispatch of vehicle etc so what are the kind of station yard like passenger bogey yard goods yard marshalling yard or locomotive yard the question sometimes asked about marshalling yard marshalling yard is said to be a machine to receive break up reform and dispatch trains onward like this this is the case of the marshalling yard in which three process are being done first of all reception receptor then six siding at which sorting is being done and then departure siding looks like this there is ash pit, loco, shed and turntable that will be placed here in the marshalling yard also. Okay. And now the topic is of the classification of signal. Signals are based on operational characteristic and functional characteristic and locational as well as special characteristic. So in the operational characteristic, we are having detonating signal that are audible signal, hand signal that are visual signal and fixed signal that are also visual signal you may have seen fixed signal you may have seen hand signal detonating signal are being placed in case of the caution as some, whenever there is some work that be, that is being going on and functional characteristic stop or semaphore type signal warner signal shunting signal that is disc or ground signal this is used for the shunting operation in which the direction of the locomotive is reversed or color light signal while based on locational characteristic 
reception signal outer signal or home signal outer signal are being placed at 540 to 400 meter before the station or home signal that will be placed at the door of the station before starting of the station and departure signal starter signal that is placed at near to the station and advanced starter that is placed at 180 meter from any signal or turnout or some other place where the signaling is required and based on special characteristic the type of signal are repeater or coacting signal routing signal calling on signal or point indicators okay these names are important nothing more than that now traction and tractor race this topic is very important for the for the mains examination of engineering service or some other examination in which it is being asked these are very important and these are being asked in gate as well as engineering service examination so please focus on this one this is very very important first of all tractive effort what is tractive effort the pull applied by the engine on the driving wheels for the movement of the train this is the pull applied okay that is the efforts that will be put by the engine for movement of the train that is called the tractive effort and hauling capacity hauling capacity is the maximum value of the friction force that can be obtained between rails and driving wheels okay these are given by f equal to mu r or mu n or mu n wd where this mu is the coefficient of friction point between 0.3 to 0.1 wd is the axle load which is already been given in the question usually and n is the number of pair of the driving wheels how you will obtain it if this is the case like this is the case of it is being given as 2 6 1 this kind of arrangement of locomotive is there so there is sorry this is the case of 2 3 1 so here it, it is a case of four non-driving wheel two non-driving wheel and be between the middle term this is the case of the driving wheels okay so six driving wheels that means three axle okay so it is a case of three axle it can also be given by sometimes it is being given as four six two also okay so maybe whatever type it is being given you should know about it that is the important thing this is the number of the axles that is three axle so here it will be number of pair of driving wheel that will be three in this case okay now hauling capacity that can be obtained as total resistance or tractive effort so we have to know the formula for total resistance here and some of these will be equal to hauling capacity then only the train can run so what is tractive resistance tractive resistance for either due to train resistance or due to track profile so we will see these one by one in the train resistance resistance independent of the speed that is called the rolling resistance rolling resistance formula is given by rt equal to 0.0016 w where w is the weight of locomotive wagon in ton okay so this is the formula for resistance independent of speed while resistance dependent on speed the formula is 0.00008 wb where v is in kmph and resistance due to atmospheric condition that is called atmospheric resistance given by 0.0000006 this is 6 times 0 and then 6 wb square okay so some of these three will be called as train resistance okay and now resistance due to track profile if there is some gradient then the resistance will be given by rg equal to w tan theta w is the weight of locomotive wagon in ton and tan theta that will be the angle theta will be the angle of gradient okay and due to curvature there will be resistance that will be given by formula 0.0004 wd for broad gauge track 0.003 wd for meter gauge track and, and 0.0002 wd for narrow gauge track okay in this one w is the weight of the locomotive wagon in turn and d is the degree of curvature it is being given in degree only okay so here we will finish the subject of railway engineering i hope i have explained all the concept in this video i recommend you to stay on with this channel subscribe to this channel if you like this video you may click the like button you may share this video if you find useful for any of your friend and comment us if you feel any problem or you may contact us at winds of change 2020 at the rate gmail.com and the pdf of this notes is available in the description box from our app of winds of change